Thank you very much. Thank you. Can you all hear me? Crikey, there's a lot of you. Um, good. So, quick show of hands, who feels like this? Fair enough, I don't blame you. Um, so you're probably thinking it would be quite nice to have a quiet start to the day, take it easy, but I'm sorry to disappoint you. <clears throat> so I'm Phil Nottingham, I'm an SEO consultant at Distilled in the London office. Uh, I'm British, as you'll be able to tell from my uh, refined accent, which means I'm gonna swear almost as much as Avinash, apologies for that. Um, and I'm actually from a background in theatre and film. I, uh, I went to an old red brick drama school in London, this is my, uh, my theatre. And um, when Will and Duncan, the um, CEOs of, of Distilled, hired me, I think they, were getting, they thought they were getting something a bit like this, but in reality, it was a little bit more like this. Um, <laughs> and so on my first day at Distilled, I was handed a box of um, tapes, of di digital video tapes, and said, uh, can you do something with the footage from our conferences? And amongst the tapes, there was this video. What we're going to cover here is how to take keyword data and demand and competition and cause change for our clients, drive business benefits. And at this point, I realized, oh my god, I have uh, some serious work to do. God. I'm going to get fired. Never mind. <coughs> uh, so eventually, I got myself uh, an editing computer, a Mac, and uh, I edited our first set of conference videos. I got a bit bored in the process, so I made a video of Rand and Will fighting with lightsabers. Um, <coughs> sure, why not? <laughs> Uh, and I realized that actually, perhaps my background in content creation, in video production, was going to be an asset that would really help me understand SEO in a certain way. And ever since I've really been focusing on SEO, it's been with a video angle. Um, so fast forward two years, we've got our own studio at Distill London. We've uh, hired Margarita, our fantastic editor and animator. Um, we've started integrating video into our own marketing campaigns. We've started doing stuff for clients. I created a video for Facebook about how you can do SEO for Facebook pages. Um, and really today I want to share with you what I've learned through that process. What I've learned and I want you to get some stuff that you can go and take away and start doing video the moment you get back to the office on Thursday. So today I'm going to talk about building a winning video marketing strategy. I want to just start by explaining why I do video. I think there are three main goals, generally speaking, for content in online marketing. You're either going to do stuff for conversions and traffic, you're going to do stuff to build your brand, or you're going to do stuff to get links and social shares. And this is absolutely true for video as all kinds of content. And with video, there are massive rewards, massive rewards if you can do it properly and you can do it well. But I can see a few people in the audience, down here particularly, kind of drifting off, probably just thinking, I'm going to sit this one out and just drink my coffee, because actually, I'm not going to do video. It's not something I can invest in. It's not something I particularly care about. Um, so I want to cover off a few of those objections very, very quickly. Number one, a lot of agency side people will say, well, our clients can't afford to do video. And you know what? If your budget is about 2,000 bucks a month, yeah, I don't think you can do video on that budget. You need more. But I think that actually is short-sighted. There's a company called Unruly Media. Um, they do viral video seeding. They're based out of the UK. Uh, they have offices in New York and San Francisco. Um, and they did a study last year that discovered that the video advertising market increased by 46%. 46% in 2012. That is a lot of money that people are spending on paid video media. Well, we're inbound marketers, right? We're SEOs. Let's pitch. Pitch for a fraction of those budgets to take the paid to the organic, from the interruption marketing to the inbound marketing stuff. Some of you are thinking, we can't afford to do video ourselves. And I disagree. And I'm going to show you a few ways that you can very, very easily and cheaply scale up the creation of uh, professional quality production. So I want to show you a video that's made with a $500 flip camera. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the second day here at MozCon. Today, I'm going to be talking about real company inbound shit marketing shit. And that video, um, you know, it's okay. It's not fantastic. It's relatively amateur, but it looks okay. But actually, just by spending a little bit more money, we can increase the production quality tenfold. So first of all, I'm going to start with the audio. The audio there was taken from just an on-camera microphone. I'm going to switch that over to the feed from a lapel microphone, like I'm wearing right now. So just listen to the shift halfway through. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the second day here at MozCon. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about real company Inbound shit marketing shit. Did you hear that? Just the shift. It's so much more clearer. So much more clearer. All you need is a little microphone. Costs you about 100 bucks. And then we can fix the uh, the video as well. So at the top left is the original footage, and then I've just added some lighting, um, done a little bit of editing on the brightness and contrast, and just graded it at the end. And you can see the difference between the bottom right one and the top left one. All that is is 500 dollars on lights and a little bit of editing skill. Nothing complicated at all, and it looks so much more professional. So. 
you can string that all together and get something like this. Howdy, Mars fans, and welcome to another edition of Whiteboard Friday. Today, I'm wearing flannel, and I want to talk to you about one of my favorite inbound marketing strategies, and that is buying links. <laughs> if you want to pretend to be Rand Fishkin. Thank you. Yeah, he's a, he's a black cat, Rand. He's a black cat. Um, if, you want to, uh, if you want to basically mimic Rand, that's all it'll cost you, 1,100 bucks to do it at minimum level. Anyone in the audience think they don't have 1,100 bucks to spend on some camera, microphone, and lights? Any of you who have your hand up, you're lying, because you spent more than that to come to this conference. You can raise that kind of budget. But you're thinking, you know what, yeah, but actually, you need some editing skill. You need some understanding of video to be able to do that kind of thing. And you know what the people who do are cheap. It's really easy to get a good freelance resource for video production. All these websites, you can find good people. And if you want to learn it yourself, there's tons of resources online to help you. So I won't hear any more excuses. So here's how we're going to do video. This is what most people do. They start and they go, OK, we're going to do video marketing, so um, what should we do a video about? Then they make the video, and then we worry about optimizing it. But this is completely wrong, because it treats video as if it's a thing, as if video is something that you go and make, and it's not. Video is a media type. Video is just a form. It's like text. It's like image. You don't create video content. You create some kind of content, and video might be the right form for that. So form has to follow function. And therefore, the right approach you should be taking is a strategic approach, a bit like what Mac was talking about yesterday. Start with a goal. What do we need to improve? What's the best way to do that? If video is going to be the right way to do that, then you can define your technical and creative strategy. And so you only use video when the message will be lost by any other medium. If you want an example of this done properly, um, everyone's seen those Will It Blend videos where they put the consumer electronics in a blender? Fantastic. That would never work as a blog post. Conversely, anybody who's done their Google Analytics uh, GAIQ qualification, those videos that you use on the training are terrible. They would be better as a blog post or, or an interactive guide or something. It doesn't work as video. Video is a media type. Why do video? Remember these three goals? I'm going to talk you through the implementation, both creative and technical, you need for each one. So I'm going to start with conversions and traffic. And really what I'm talking about here is videos to help sell a specific product or service. Product videos, things created for commercial pages. I'm going to show you an example of uh, a site that's done it particularly well. Hi, I'm Emma from Appliances Online, and this is the Bosch Classics washing machine. Now, there's nothing really too unusual about the look of this, which is pretty good, especially as it can blend in with other appliances that you may have in the home. I do quite like the red accents on here, though. It adds a little bit of something without being too garish. I think you get the idea. That's from appliancesonline.co.uk, a UK online retailer of white goods. A user who watches one of those videos is twice as likely to convert. Nice. And they spend 9.1% more money on average. That's what winning looks like. <laughs> and really, it's videos for pages. These videos are created to augment and enhance a specific page. They do not work as standalone videos. And what appliances online have done particularly well is taking an individual who lands on one of their commercial pages from that point of initial interest to conversion. It's that final thing Avanash was talking about yesterday. It's the do. And they do that through soft selling, through giving hard facts. Here's what the washing machine is. Here's how big the drum is, all that kind of stuff and empathizing with the situation of the audience. If you're doing this kind of content, you need to make sure you're including the transcriptions in the HTML as page copy, not as JavaScript overlays on the video. Why? Well, it's really valuable for users. If you are mobile or you're at work, you might not be in a position to be able to watch a video. It might not be appropriate. And yet, the page copy can still provide all that content, that information for people. So make sure you're including the page copy on the page. Additionally, Anybody who works in e-commerce knows really hard to get unique text on product pages. If you've done a video, transcribe it, two birds with one stone, get some unique text on your product page. Best paid transcription service, we've tried to load out or distilled, and we really recommend SpeechPad. Um, we've been happy with what they've returned every time. For this kind of content, you need to ensure you're getting video-rich snippets in the search results, if you can. Um, so these links here, they're going to get a higher click-through rate, so build you more traffic. Um, this is an example from a company called Kurtz & Bloom. They're a, a lawyers based out of Raleigh, North Carolina. They saw a 14% increase uh, in organic traffic month on month just from implementing the markup to get these rich snippets. So how do you do that? Well, you need to use a paid, secure hosting solution, like any of the ones that I've got on this slide there. Um, I've tried them all out, and I recommend wholeheartedly Wistia for 99% of companies. If you're a small and medium business, Wistia is absolutely the best video platform for you out there. The only instance that you might not want to use Wistia is um, if you are a massive company who can like, afford to spend loads of development resource on a custom solution, 
or if you're a big media house and then you want to use Brightcove so you can sell advertising on top of it. Then you need to create and submit a video sitemap. I'm not going to tell you how to do this, just uh, Google video sitemaps. I've written about it extensively. But don't use YouTube for conversion videos. Do not put conversion videos on YouTube. Why? Because YouTube will rank for your videos. These kind of things, it's, it's very hard to um, choose a different keyword that's relevant for a specific product. Um, so your branded terms, appliances online, while they have amazing videos, they've used the YouTube API to embed them, which means that YouTube.com gets the rich snippet in the search results for their branded queries. And you might think that's not such a huge problem, because you know what? You can drive traffic from YouTube back to your site. You can include links in the annotations if you're a partner. You can include links in the descriptions back to your pages. So surely you can drive some traffic back to your site from people who watch your content on YouTube. Well, I've done some research. I looked at 95 individual company YouTube channels. So everyone that we had access to their YouTube channel and the Google Analytics are distilled. And that was a total of 900 million views. This is not small. YouTube channels that only pick big ones. And I discovered that the average level of referring traffic compared with views over um, actual referrals from YouTube is 0.72% for any company that had implemented the links to do that. Low, not much traffic. The best performing site out of that lot was REI, um, and they had a click-through rate of 4.37%, which still isn't huge. So YouTube is not fantastically great at driving traffic back to your site. That's not what YouTube does. People don't go to YouTube to find products or services. They go there to watch a video, to be entertained or informed. And they will watch related videos. They typically don't go back to your site. So if you are putting your conversion videos on YouTube and YouTube's ranking for your branded queries, you could be losing up to a maximum of 99% of your potential traffic. Epic fail. Um, so scumbag YouTube, <coughs> don't use YouTube for conversion videos. But that doesn't mean that YouTube is useless. Of course, absolutely not. YouTube is absolutely the best platform that you should be using to build brand awareness. And this is the stuff that Avinash was talking about yesterday. So the, the thinking and the seeing, that's what this is for. This is what YouTube's for. And we'll give you an example of it done very, very well. Welcome aboard this Air Middle Earth flight. Before we set out on our journey, I would like to impart a story of safety. Anyone see that video from Air New Zealand? Really, really good, really, really clever. And what it is, is they've taken a, a specific story. So the idea of New Zealand is essentially Middle Earth, and they've attached that to their brand. They've embraced it, and they've given themselves a fantastic lift in brand awareness. It's a creative story. The other thing you can do on YouTube that will be very successful, purely informational content. Letting people know about your brand by offering them stuff for free. REI have done this fantastically well. Go check out their channel. It's all informational stuff. It's you know, how should you choose a bike? Um, all branded, all very professionally produced, but it's not selling anything. It's just providing information. It's that first touch. And YouTube is really great, but you have to ensure that the content is relevant for an audience unfamiliar with your brand, relevant for those people who are going to find you through YouTube search, through YouTube referrals. And you can use the YouTube keyword tool to work out what people are searching for. So use that and find out topics and stuff that you can make videos about that's going to be relevant for the YouTube audience. And then you need to optimize for YouTube. I'm not going to tell you how to do this exactly, because there's loads of information about it. But you can come and chat to me at the bar later. Um, and most importantly with YouTube is to measure engagement, not views. Views are impressions, right? They're essentially a vanity metric. Um, and they're not counted for ranking. What matters in YouTube, the biggest ranking factor in YouTube, is engagement. It's are people watching through to your video? Are they clicking out? You need to optimize to make sure that people are sticking with it as long as they can. And you need to do that with all your videos on your channel. It's not enough with YouTube to have one great video and a load of stuff that's not so hot. It needs to be lean and it needs to be mean. All of it needs to be quality and then the rankings of everything will be lifted. Goal three, thanks to social shares. There's a few ways that you can um, build links with video content. I want to run through them now. So firstly is using video as a uh, part of a creative page type. So what I mean is um, this kind of thing. So uh, we've got a client in London office at Distilled called Simply Business, and we built this, which is a guide to using WordPress for small businesses. So businesses who are going to go and create their first website. Uh, what it is is you click one of these links down the bottom of these questions, a light box will pop up with a video tutorial explaining how to get started on WordPress. The value is it's mixed media. It's an interactive piece that's exciting. Remember, video is a media type. This kind of thing works. Um, we've done the same for uh, a guide about YouTube marketing. <clears throat> and then you can create video specifically as a link page. So video that people are going to embed, and you're going to get links off the back of that. Uh, and this actually doesn't look like viral content. This is not the kind of thing that you create for brand awareness. It's not Dollar Shave Club something different. Because while all these videos and all this kind of stuff gets links, it's mostly from marketing websites saying how great it is and how great marketing it is. And that's fine. That's a strategy. But ultimately, if you want those evergreen, 
high quality referring links from sites in your niche, you need to do something a bit different. Um, and I think it looks a little bit like this. Many economists believe exchange rates should eventually adjust to make the price of a basket of goods the same in each country. But the average basket of goods in America is different from the average basket in China. That's actually a video that we've uh, just about to launch for one of our clients that distilled, uh, Travelex. Um, have a look at it. It's called the Big Mac Index Explained. You can Google it. Um, and it was actually based on this video here, which is created by um, ABC Australia. We based the style on this. It's essentially like a video infographic, right? It's taking information and condensing it into something a bit more easily consumable. And this piece got really, really good links. Got links on Forbes, got links on Scientific American. In total, it got 680 links from 214 domains. Nice, I'd like that, that would be great. The problem is, is that ABC Australia used Vimeo to host this video. They put it on Vimeo, so the version was publicly visible on Vimeo.com. And that meant that the version to Vimeo.com got 517 linking root domains. Because when you embed a YouTube or a Vimeo video, you normally don't link back to the owner of that video, it's just to YouTube or Vimeo. And this is what the difference looks like in terms of lost links, ouch. So how do you prevent that? Well, you need to securely host. You need to ensure that the video is initially only visible on your domain, so your video is seen as the de facto canonical by Google. And to do this, you need to use one of those paid hosting secure solutions again. I recommend Wistia. And then you need to ensure that you're including a referring href link at the end of your embed code that you're outreaching with. So when anybody embeds your video, they're linking back to you as a matter of course. I've actually built a tool that will allow you to do this very, very simply and very quickly. Uh, it's at dist.til slash video hyphen embed hyphen generator. But some of you are thinking, that sounds like a pretty crappy strategy because actually YouTube and Vimeo are great social platforms and they can provide that seeding that you would probably really want if you're doing link bait, you're doing stuff that you want to get eyeballs on. So you can fix it. Bait and switch, White House style. Start by securely hosting. Start by using Wistia or another platform. Um, outreach to all your really targeted uh, individuals who you've thought, I really want a link from them, so you followed Rich Baxter's process from yesterday. Outreach to them with that paid, secure uh, embed code. Then you can put the content on YouTube afterwards. And then a couple of months later, what you need to do is to go into your YouTube analytics. You then want to click on playback locations. You then want to find a report that says embedded player on other websites. So you just scroll down here, and it's just there. So you click on that, and you'll be given a list of every single website that has embedded any one of your YouTube videos. And you can then outreach to them and say, hey, can I have a link back? Um, you can then use Open Site Explorer to find out if anybody's linked to the video but not embedded it. And then you need to go with that value proposition in your outreach. And what I like to do is to get my secure, hosted, self-hosted embed code, outreach to the person who's embedded the YouTube version and say, hey, would you mind embedding this HD version instead? This version's faster, it'll be easier to load, it's high quality, there's no ads. The return from that is so high because they've already linked to you, right? And all you're doing is providing them and their users with a better experience. Pro tip for anybody who works in an agency, if you're taking on new clients, for goodness sake, go and find out if they've had any successes on YouTube and if anybody's linked to them. Really, really easy to get some quick links that way. And you can also do blogging video uh, to get links. So the Whiteboard Friday stuff. Um, our client in the London office, Simply Business, they spent 15,000 bucks on a quite a nice studio. They've now started interviewing their customers, which by the way is an amazing way to improve retention. Um, they've started interviewing authorities in their niche. And this is essentially, essentially ego bait because you are interviewing people and then handing down that high quality video that shows them off in a really positive light and naturally people are gonna link to it. People like Rich Baxter, thanks for the link. <clears throat> and you can do something to build links if you have absolutely no budget at all. And that's use the YouTube API to build a custom playlist. So the YouTube API will actually allow you to curate content into a playlist and make that visible on your site but not on YouTube.com. Um, so I've built a tool that will allow you to do this and you can build some links through content curation this.tool slash YouTube hyphen playlist hyphen tool. And I know some of you are sat there thinking, that's cool, like I get this stuff for conversions, stuff for brand awareness, stuff for links. Can I do it all? Can I have it all with one piece of content? And I think you're essentially asking, can I have my cake and eat it? And the answer is, not really, it's kind of crappy. Because technical implementation can cannibalize. If you try to do something for conversions and rich snippets, but you also put it on YouTube to get brand awareness, you'll find that you get a lot of traffic to YouTube and not much back to your site. 
If you try new stuff for links and social shares and brand awareness, so you put it on YouTube and your own site, then you'll find that um, a lot of the links point to YouTube. You can mitigate against that and ask for some back, but it's never going to be ideal. And if you're trying to do stuff for conversions and rich snippets and links and social shares, well, I mean, the content's just not going to be appropriate. Video is much, much better when you create content with that goal in mind initially. So you start with a goal and then work out what you're going to do, and you absolutely focus on that single point. Three megas of video. But you don't need to reinvent the wheel every time. You don't have to create completely new content for each platform and each goal. If you can hire an editor, in the US that'll cost you about $300 a day, you can segment your content by goal and then recut and re-edit a library of footage that you've got to have uh, content relevant for each audience, slightly adjusted, slightly changed for each specific goal. That's the way to do this. So I just want to finish in the last few minutes here by giving you the blueprint for what I really want you guys to go away and do on Thursday. Tell you exactly the kind of content you're going to make and how you're going to go about it. So all of you are going to go back and you're going to invest in a camera, some lights, and some microphones. And you can come and speak to me later and I'll tell you what you need to buy. And then you're going to go and create tutorials and how-tos, like REI have done. You're going to go and do thought leadership blogging video, like Whiteboard Friday. Then you're going to do video news releases. Video news releases are a fantastic way to improve the efficacy and value of your PR campaigns. If you support a PR release with uh, an accompanying video, it will get to the top of an editor's pile so much faster because you've taken half the work from them by providing them with this unique, relevant content. And then you can get Will Critchell on the BBC. If you've got a bit more budget, you can hire some production resource, hire a, a videographer. That'll cost you about $600 a day. And then you want to bring them in, do interviews with all your staff. Take product shots if you've got physical merchandise. Do screencasts if you're doing software as a service or you're in a B2B space. And do general views of your office, things that's going on, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can get your editor. And you can create product and category conversion videos, like Appliances Online have done for conversions, four pages. And then you can actually re-edit those and get some links. So um, we have a client in London who are basically like uh, Zillow are in the US. So they're a great big property website. And what we did is we went out to loads of realtors in London, in the boroughs of London, and interviewed them all about that specific area. We've then cut those into a string of videos for each category page, so for a specific area in London. And then we've done second cuts of those that are just the single interviews with each realtor. We've added their branding to it, and we've given them an embed code to put on their own site. And naturally, they've done it, because it's a fantastic way of showing them off in a positive light. It's great ego bait, and we're getting links from our SERP competitors. Nice. And then you can create videos to augment the corporate and the people pages. So um, this is a great way to build trust. Moz have released a few videos recently that all do a fantastic job of this. They show who the people are, who the company are, really um, help people to understand what a specific company is about, build that trust, help with the conversion rate. Um, and it will also really help you with PR pitches. So go check out a company called Huddle. Um, they've done a really good job of this. And then if you have the big budgets, you can do link bait. You can do the creative stories like New Zealand. And you can advertise your content library and permission assets. So YouTube advertising sucks. I think everyone knows that. Because, and I think the main reason is because most companies, actually big companies, just put their TV advertising on YouTube. Just upload it to YouTube and pay loads of money on seeding. And that sucks, because YouTube is not TV. It's a different platform. You need to achieve engagement with a YouTube ad within the first 5 to 15 seconds. Um, so really, what I think people should be doing with YouTube advertising is advertising things that are not directly sellable. Um, like Avinash was talking, start with, the, start with the C and the think for YouTube advertising. Advertise your content library, your permission assets. You've got a great email list, advertise it. If you have no budget at all, then you can do Vine. I think there's going to be great rewards for companies who work out exactly what Vine should look like and how they can build their brand off the back of that. Same with Instagram video and Google Plus Hangout on Air. All you need is a laptop and a webcam. Everybody in this room has one because I can see you all. Um, really nice way to do thought leadership stuff. Try and look a bit more professional than Will Critchlow. <clears throat> Key takeaways, you don't have to do everything at once. You don't. But do what you do well. Absolutely refine the goals and nail it. And if you need to, you can pitch to go slower. If you're an agency side, say to your client, we're just going to spend, um, you know, we'll just do one piece of content every three months rather than one, one piece of content um, each month and then pitch for more budget when you can show ROI and success. This isn't really about video, right? It's about making better pages and making better marketing channels. So use video when it's the right form of content for an idea. Let the business goals drive the technical and the creative implementation. Think big, start small, ship it. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Phil. Oh, just got a text from Rand. Uh, you're fired. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell me a little bit more about these engagement metrics. You, you, you talked about how to, you're looking at engagement and not views. Yep. What are you looking for there, like, uh, like when things go bad, when things go down, people are leaving the video? And sure, yeah. So um, the, within the issue of analytics, you have a, a relative audience retention report, and it will show you on basically just a, a sort of wave graph um, where people are dropping out. So what you want is to see the graph going from high and then keeping up and keep going higher. Anytime you see a, a dip, a drop, then you know that that's when people are kind of clicking out of the video or they're not watching it. And you need to optimize for retention. So you see as fewer people as possible clicking out of your video, basically. Um, and that's going to help you rank better. But it's also going to show that you've got great content and show that your content is relevant for users. In your experience, have you found that certain, is there a certain length of video that works better than others, or does it depend on the audience? It, I mean, it depends, on, it depends on two things. It depends on the style of the content and what you're trying to achieve with it. So if it's like an ad that you're going to pay for seeding, it needs to like get to the point within the first five, 10 seconds tops, and like be no longer than maybe 30 seconds. For long form content, like bloggy type stuff, like the Whiteboard Fridays, that can be up to half an hour and it's fine. It, like it totally depends on the style of content. There isn't, video is, is not content, right? It's a media type, so it depends what kind of content you're doing. Sure. Um, okay, so I wanted to actually look at a little bit outside those three in terms mm -hmm. of from our point of view as a software company, we've toyed with the idea of using video uh, for you know, help, for mm -hmm. uh, giving people instruction, that sort of thing. But one of the things we've never really been quite sure of is whether there's a, a platform that it would be better for doing that kind, those kinds of videos. Yep. So do you have any ideas on that? Uh, by platform, do you mean for hosting? Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, so I mean, actually, I think that, that I would put that within the conversion bracket, essentially. If you are doing stuff for retention, you're trying to keep people engaged, you're fundamentally doing it for your existing audience to increase the conversions. It's just that the conversion is retention. Um, and I think absolutely you need to, uh, hi, Rand. Um, you absolutely need to <laughs> ensure that it's, it, I mean, it's relevant content. If it's, if it's relevant only for the people who are existing customers, um, then it should be on your own site. You should securely host. Um, it doesn't really matter which platform you use. I personally really like Wistia, um, but there's lots of others that are very, very good. You probably don't want to put it on YouTube because if it's only relevant for that audience who already understand your product, then YouTube's going to provide no additional value. Um, and you need to like, keep those people on your site, build, keep them in your community framework. Okay, great. Thank you. No problem. Yes. Is this thing on? So we come across some situations working on sites in the security industry uh, who have always on SSL, mm -hmm. and streaming doesn't work quite well over HTTPS yeah. quite yet. So often we see situations where the um, solution is to use a combination of YouTube as well as self-hosted video. So using sort of custom HTML5 players. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the pitfalls you can think of or you've seen with uh, hosting your own video? Yeah, um, I, so I don't think that's the right solution. I think if you're doing HTML5 video properly, it should be cool. You don't need to resort to YouTube. Um, the problem is that like, you'll end up, for some certain terms, particularly if it's like specifically product-focused stuff, you'll end up with YouTube ranking rather than your own site for your own videos, which obviously you don't really want. Um, also, you'll then find that if the content is not that relevant for a YouTube audience, then your entire YouTube channel will be devalued and stuff won't rank as well across the board. So it can really kind of cannibalize the quality of your YouTube strategy as well as cannibalize the quality of uh, like how much traffic you can actually drive from your videos if you've implemented the markup correctly. So that's kind of the problem. Um, and it's, it's not necessarily like the be all and end all. If you have to go down that way for whatever reason, sure. But it's, it's really not that strategic. So um, it, it's kind of like, I think of it as like um, when people do blogs and they will put a, the blog post on their own site and also submit it as a guest post. Like, we've kind of moved away from that as, uh, as an industry now, and yet still people seem content to put video on their own site and put it on YouTube and put it on Vimeo and everywhere. And it's like, well, video is no different to text in that sense, and I think we should really think about creating stuff for the platform rather than just creating stuff and then worrying about the platform afterwards. And I want to squeeze one more in here, right here. Hi, uh, Erica Douglas from erica.biz. I had a video on YouTube about how to create a free survey with Google Docs, mm -hmm. and it started ranking in Google for things like free online survey tool, and I ended up getting like 70,000 views for it. Cool. This was sort of accidental. I'm trying to figure out if there's a strategy other than the typical SEO backlinks, title, keywords, 
that would work to help get YouTube videos of mine ranked for informational searches like that? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's loads. I would just encourage you to go and read um, some stuff that I've written on video optimization for YouTube, basically. But um, long and short of it is, really quickly, like embeds, YouTube embeds are essentially like links. Um, so get loads and loads of embeds on lots of sites. Um, make sure you're including uh, uploading a video transcription to YouTube, and you can actually <coughs> keyword stuff that in quite a white hat way by um, sort of maybe including stuff like the directions of what's happening. So you could say like this actor is saying this, or now I'm just now I'm, now I'm describing this. Um, so other transcriptions get embeds, um, drive views from lots of different IP addresses, that kind of stuff. I'm not going to get too black hat, but um, yeah, like it's it's not it's not. Uh, massively different from optimizing for a normal page. It's just that this page is on YouTube.com. Thanks. No problem. All right. Thank you, Phil. Thank you.